Well, in Holland there's an enormous interest in homing pigeons and as a result the University of Utrecht set up a mobile loft experiment on land similar to the ones I'd done before but with similar results again. The pigeons could find it but they wouldn't go in. So then we moved on to a whole new idea which was doing these experiments on a ship at sea. And a Dutch filmmaker, Louis van Gasteren, um, took this project up and organised it together with me. Um, he managed to persuade an admiral in the Royal Dutch Navy to do this experiment on their main research ship, the Tiedemann. Um, he got a pigeon loft installed on the boat, a retired uh, naval uh, sailor uh, who was a pigeon fancier to volunteer to look after the pigeons on the ship. We got pigeons from Dutch pigeon fanciers. We even got some from the Swiss uh, army um, who kindly donated pigeons that had been trained to move to mobile lofts. It took quite a while to get them to Den Helder, the Dutch naval port, because Switzerland's not a member of NATO and it just had to be cleared at the highest level in NATO. Um, but the pigeons were uh, finally installed on the ship. Uh, it then took off from Den Helder, I went across the Atlantic to the Caribbean, to St. Martin in the Caribbean, came back via Madeira, um, and uh, the, the entire journey was about 6,000 miles. Pigeons were bred on the ship, so we had young pigeons that had never seen land. And these pigeons were trained, and the pigeons were able to home to the ship as it travelled over 6,000 miles. It showed First of all, that pigeons really can be trained to live at sea. Uh, these pigeons had never seen land, these young pigeons, and their training flights only occurred when the ship was out of sight of land. Um, and the, the entire experiment showed that the, uh, it's possible to do this. When we did the actual experiments we'd planned, we took the pigeons off the boat and let them fly back to it from another boat. Um, in some cases they did this over a distance of about 30 or 40 miles. Uh, we were planning greater distances but unfortunately the day we'd allocated for the experiment uh, the T demand had to do some sonar experiment for the French Navy and when I asked the commander why they wouldn't do our experiments in priority as agreed he said well they're paying us hundreds of thousands of euros and uh, you're not, and um, so unfortunately that has to take precedence. So uh, we did all this work. We proved that the pigeons could home to the loft. We proved that they could home over distances of up to 50 miles. And one of the most interesting observations occurred when the ship um, did a training flight. The, well, the ship was near Madeira, the island of Madeira, did a training flight. and. One of the pigeons didn't return, and the ship then sailed on, and when it had gone about 300 miles, this pigeon returned to the ship. Now, if it was four or five days later, um, it very unlikely, it's very unlikely it was flying over the sea for the whole of that time. What's most likely is that it went to the island of Madeira and stayed on land for a while, and then returned to the ship flying over hundreds of miles of sea, of unfamiliar sea, with no landmarks, and found the ship. Well, this was absolutely a fascinating experiment, and Louis van Gasteren and his film crew filmed the whole of this. And I've only recently been able to get hold of this footage. Um, he was planning to make a documentary uh, about this, which he didn't do uh, before his death. Um, and his widow, um, Joka Meerman, very kindly gave all his film uh, to me, and I've recently had it digitalized, and we're going through it at the moment. And here is a, a short extract um, showing the pigeons flying round the boat and the pigeon loft on the boat.
Dan gaat hij hier krijgen onze rubber boot mee. I'm hoping to uh, go through this footage in much greater detail and recover as much information as I can about this Dutch naval experiment. But the question uh, it raises is really the need to do the whole experiment again uh, more thoroughly. Uh, what it's shown is that it's possible to do this. Uh, such experiments can be done. Pigeons can home to ships at sea. Um, so what's needed is a ship that can be used for several months that's ocean going um, uh, uh, where it doesn't have to do anything else except this experiment. Now obviously that's not going to be the case with um, cargo vessels or most naval vessels um, but it might be the case with super yachts and there are a, an awful lot of underemployed super yachts at the moment. Um, so I think that uh, if someone with a, a privately owned boat were to volunteer for this experiment, um, it would be possible to take this research to a whole new level and help to unlock um, one of the greatest problems in unsolved problems in animal biology. Of course, the super yacht uh, owner and crew may not particularly want pigeon droppings on highly polished woodwork. So there would have to be uh, precautions for protective coverings, etc., etc. Um, but it's not very difficult to do this research. I mean, the cost of pigeons is quite low. The shed they live in is fairly low. Uh, you know, there are a lot of experienced pigeon fanciers. Um, so I myself am very hopeful that it would be possible to do this research and find out how pigeons home uh, how birds migrate. Is there really a sense of direction, something that connects them with their home across space um, and acts as a kind of pull, uh, taking them back to their home, uh, or isn't there? And if there is, uh, how can we find out first that it exists, and secondly, how can we find out more about these fields and how they work? This would open up a whole new chapter of science with enormous implications for understanding migration not only of birds but also of fish like salmon which can smell their home river in the, when they're a few miles away but uh, for thousands of miles wandering around the ocean they're not doing it by smell. Um, even for butterflies like monarch butterflies which can migrate from particular trees in Mexico up towards the Great Lakes in North America and then back again in the autumn to the very same trees, passing through five generations on the way. It's not as if it's even the same butterflies that go back to the same spot. So insects migrate, birds migrate, reptiles migrate like turtles, um, it, it, the migration, mammals migrate. There's many kinds of migration and navigation going on. Humans too may have a, a sense of direction in most modern people it's probably atrophied through GPS systems, but traditional societies like Polynesian navigators or Australian Aborigines were able to navigate over enormous distances. And so latent in us there may also be a sense of direction which we've more or less ignored. All of these are open questions and personally I find it really interesting that there are still huge open questions in science um, that haven't been answered um, and yet which could be answered. So I have to end on a note of just leaving the question open. It has to be an open question. It is an open question and who knows 
uh, when these experiments will be done which could help to answer it. Um, the future is open.